Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and this is the Keep Calm and Carry Yarn podcast. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 141 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughters. I'm recording from Michigan. And I'm coming at you from Scotland. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're listening on a podcast app or watching along on YouTube. Hey, everyone. Hi. It's Allison <laughs> it's again. again. Yeah. Three in a row. <laughs> Three Emily, in a row. Emily who? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it's happened. Yeah. It's okay. We'll, we'll talk to Emily at the uh, second half of the month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But there's a reason why we did the O switcheroo. Mm-hmm. Uh, will come later. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm just noticing for people who can see me, I have so many wispies in my hair, uh-huh. like the front of my hair. I hear like, is it like pregnant people who talk about, like pe- people who have been pregnant talk about uh-huh. getting these? But yeah. I have so many. Well, just, like, I do too. Up see, look, I have them too. <laughs> I think it's because your hair is constantly falling out and it's constantly growing back in. I don't know. Yeah. But then doesn't that happen to everybody? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, so have you been? Yeah, I've been okay. Mm, yeah. It's feeling kind of autumnal out. I've I've lit, I've got a couple candles in my room. My new favorite is from London. My, my sister-in-law got it as a, a gift for us. <laughs> Crouch end candles and the the, the scent is gypsy soul and it sounds it <laughs> smells very like cozy and autumnal. Yeah, I have um one of my favorite. I forget what it's called, but it smells smells like wood smoke and patchouli, mm-hmm. and it smells very like campfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's straight up fire. I like my candles to smell like fire. <laughs> well, wood fire. Um, and I'm I'm almost done with that one, so I'm gonna have to replace it with something else. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been it's been in the 40s the last two nights, so I'm like, wow. I'm so happy. Your dad's miserable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay, you wanna jump right into our fiber content? Yeah. Or our crafty content. Crafty content. Mm-hmm. What you've been working on, whips wise? I whips wise. So I've been working on my my this my cozy cow by Emily K Williams. And last time I was saying that, oh yeah, I'm on my third repeat. No, I wasn't. I had just started the second repeat. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. So I just <laughs> I'm just about finishing up the second repeat right now. Repeat meaning there's four colors in one repeat and then it starts all over again so this is a a lacy basically infinity scarf with five colors the main color is is a like an off-white color and and the contrasting colors are different shades of blues and turquoise teals and so Yeah, yeah. yeah so you do like a stripe of one color with the lace and then in between the this the first and the second color there is a skinny band of the white which is just reverse stocking it mm-hmm. so it's going to be i was looking at the the chart not the chart the the pattern last night so it's supposed to be 24 inches deep i'm about yeah just over 12 right now so yeah one more repeat but it matches yeah. my outfit, my my sweater, because mm. these are the colors I like. <laughs> yeah. Blues, so blue yes. Feel. So not not a whole lot to say about it. I mean, it looks pretty much the same as it did last time. <laughs> if you weren't paying attention, just a little bit bigger. Yeah. But yeah. it's beautiful. So that's that. And that is from the journal Journal of Scottish Yarn Number One. And the other thing that I've been working on is. <laughs> One, two, three, eleven, twelve, and thirteen of wow, my your advent, mitten, advent, advent calendar mitten. mittens. Yep. So I did three of them in 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 the in the two week set. Oh, I like I like twelve. Yeah, I I actually changed up twelve, so it's only supposed to be 
Um, so 12 has this little pony in the middle. So uh -huh. the, 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 the flowers yeah. next to the ponies, that's supposed uh -huh. to be the same color as the pony. So that's supposed oh, to be I all see. blue. And then like maybe like one row of, one row of, uh, no, oh, that's supposed to be all red. And then like one row of blue maybe in the middle or something like that. It's supposed to be mostly the red and the blue. And then there's like uh -huh. smatterings of blue. Like where the, the centers of the flowers, whichever, wherever the centers so, of the flowers so is. So are you saying the ponies should have been red? Yeah. But I made okay. it blue because I like, I like the, it looks very Scandinavian. Yeah. Very Scandinavian. Yeah. With the so especially ones. with the blue and the blue and the red and it looks very retro too. Mm, uh, like yeah, retro cute. Scandinavia. So that's number I think that 12. was a good, a good call to make the horse a different color. Yeah, it was a pain in the butt because I was holding three oh, colors. Three colors. Um, yeah. While I was doing the... So I actually forgot to do the blues in the center of the flowers where the pony is. But like, ah, forget it. I could either... I can always... Uh, you duplicate stitch it. Duplicate stitch it or just leave it. I think I just might leave it. Yeah, yeah. That's 12. Number 11 is... Um, so there's snowflakes and a zigzag in a white and gray with very red simple stripes. Some very simple, ones. yeah. And this one also is just a, a number 11 is just two colors. Mm. I did red and tan. Mm. And I'd just start, two color yeah, just two colors. Strips. And number 13 is um, on the go. Yeah, I just, I just finished the cuff. So it's red and, gray. Red, red and tan and gray. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of it's zigzags, like a, a traditional, like a fair isle sweater that has the zigzags and the, the color work. Yeah, yeah, it's got some zigzags. And anyway, it, lo it looks like fair isle. So mm -hmm. I'm not doing three colors at the same time with this one. Are you determined to finish it for Christmas? Um, no, not necessarily, no. but... You know, if you I finish little... it, great. I just I just got a little tired of my other projects and I, I did maybe another two rounds of the yell my yell cardigan, which is upstairs and um, uh -huh. not that's not very uh portable. So I can't really take it to knitting or even mm -hmm. when I'm I do my Zoom knitting group. Yeah. I have to cons uh, I don't know, I it's harder to do that work on that yeah that makes sense well a mitten a, t a mini mitten is pretty portable <laughs> yeah guess, so the, these i mean but the, these are. little little um if i mess up one row i can tear back it's not a big deal right yeah. because they're they're so it's so narrow you know it's not very big but with the yellow cardigan if i mess up one row that's like 300 stitches or something <laughs> that, <laughs> that have to fix how, how i'm sure i've asked you but how long does it take you to do about how long does it take you to make one of those mittens? About two days. I can finish one in two days. Mm -hmm. If if I'm, yeah. if I mean, even if I'm doing others like other stuff, meaning not other knitting, but you know, um, yard. I was doing a lot of yard work while I was doing all these. So you know, I would knit a little bit in the morning and then a little bit um, in the yeah. afternoon, and then most of my knitting would be after dinner in front of the TV. So yeah. yeah, I can finish it, and well, I, I should say I should I could finish the body of it in two days, and on the third day I have to do the thumb because yeah. I always <laughs> reserve that for the next day. Oh, I don't want to deal with the thumb tonight. I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> mm. so yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I just as long as you know, as long as I don't want to finish my other projects, <laughs> I can work on these. Yeah. So what what how what have you been working on whips wise? Um, not too much knitting. Oh my, oh my God. I actually don't think I'm working on any crochet whips or FOs. I've got <laughs> whips, but I haven't worked on them since the last time we spoke. There's one that you can't talk about that you haven't talked, talk, talk to me about. Is there? There's a secret project. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a project that I can't talk about. Um, so yeah, I haven't, I've done a little bit of crochet. I just can't talk about it. Um, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> I am working on my ugh, Lento sweater. Yeah, Lento. And you're almost is, done. I'm almost done. Um, I think, 
So I got a sleeve. That's the accomplishment. The first sleeve is done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I had kind of stalled because I had to move on to the ribbing for the cuff yeah. and it needed different needles. So that's just, you know, so hard to <laughs> move on to separate needles. But I couldn't find the needles that I used. They were, I, I mostly use these um Haya Haya Sharps, which are metal. But I had used a wooden pair that you had given me ages ago because it just happened to be the right size. It's like a 4.5 millimeter. And that's what I had used on the, the bottom. Mm-hmm. Couldn't find them. Still can't find them. So I went out to the shop to Ginger Twist and bought 4.5s. Did the cuff and I was looking at it and it basically, it, it was too wide. Like mm-hmm. the whole cuff, it was like mm-hmm. the same width as the sleeve. So uh-huh. it didn't go in. Um and you were saying just like the different material of the uh, needles pro- probably just changed my gauge. So my theory is that because the the what I bought, what I normally use, the the metal is so slippy, I've got quite loose gauge because I just like fling them off mm, the, the needles. Mm-hmm. Whereas the wooden one, I think it's a bit tighter because it sticks to it so much, which almost seems like you would... Like I feel like some people might knit looser in order to so it doesn't stick. So you can just... But yeah, I found that because it was quite sticky, mm. I, I ended up knitting tighter maybe. Um, so I bought the 4.5s and ended up using a 3.5, which I already had. So, <laughs> But I'm just growing my knitting needle set at this point, I guess. Um, so I am now like maybe halfway done. Oh, nice. No, not quite half with the sleeve. Um, really? It looks done. like... Mm, looks like about I'm almost halfway. Done with the de- yeah, maybe it's about halfway. I'm almost done with the decreases, at least. So, let's see. Yeah, about halfway. I've got short arms. <laughs> <laughs> so it's full length, full, full, full long sleeves. It's not like is is the pattern. Is it three quarter sleeves or is it full? Mm-mm, I don't think so. It, they're full sleeves. It's a little mm-hmm. bit cropped. A little mm, bit short. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, so that's almost done, and that'll be exciting to have a second knitted garment done. That you can wear, um, now that it's yeah. getting cooler. Yeah, it's, it's starting to be the right weather. And now as well, because this was like as much color I was out of, as I was willing to to go with, because it's, so I'm using the, the light lilac um, mohair paired with a an interesting, like mostly green, mostly green. Um, it just looks gray on the screen, here. so I yeah, can't see. Yeah, so it does like. look kind of. It reads gray from far away. So it's got a little bit of color. Um, <laughs> but I've been embracing more color lately. So actually, I was like, I could have done. You got you got you color. color on your your fingers. Mm, no, paint, I just painted my nails this morning. Um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's the only whip I've got. So. Uh, the lentil sweater. Who is it by? It's not in the north. It's it's a, uh, it's a lane pattern. Oh yeah, here it is. is by fine. Joanne Jo Joanne jo, Jonah he- Helen Helen. Yeah. H e l i n. It's it's been a long time since you've mentioned that. Uh. Mm. Yeah, I, I I have got too many whips on the go. I think, <laughs> but it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, you know, you get bored of one thing and then you move on to another. That's, you know, but that's, that's why, you know, a lot of people have UFOs. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think necessarily it's like that I get bored. It's just starting too many things and then you start to forget about the other, like the things that you've done and started. So I was showing... My mother-in-law was here, and so I had a basket of project bags, and I was just showing her what was in here. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot I started that. <laughs> She's like, oh, oh no. I, I do have, like, I was rummaging in my basket, and there's a couple of things in there that I've never even mentioned. <laughs> in oh. the it's like, oh. Uh, oh well. Right. Um, BuzzFeed quiz? Sure, BuzzFeed quiz. Let me um, see. So this says, enjoy a three-course meal, food, of course, and I'll guess your favorite <laughs> fantasy movie franchise. And um, 
What, what what did you get? I got um it says I bet your favorite fantasy franchise is the Dune saga. Oh. A little <laughs> sand in a sandwich never hurt anyone, right? Personally, I prefer dessert to the desert, but as long as you keep from being the next meal to a giant sandworm, I kind I can kind of see the beauty of this lands landscape. Did I guess correctly? No. I don't dislike the dunes, the dune. <laughs> I read, I did read I, I I did read the the book, the first book when I was in high school. Um but it's definitely not my favorite. Hmm. So I got something that would be I don't know if it's your favorite, but it's probably more than dune. <laughs> I bet your favorite fantasy franchise is The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know, a lot of people forget about Second Breakfast, but not you. You think every <laughs> moment should be surrounding food and would love a whole bag of Lampus bread. Did I guess correctly? And the reason why I, I know you like Lord of the Rings is because, well, <laughs> twofold. There's two things I tell you all. One is I, I saw The Return of the King like two or three times in theaters. Once at like a friend's birthday and then the second time because you were like uh excuse me i want to see it and so you took me to the, <laughs> to the theater to see it again and then two like now you listen to podcasts and mostly podcasts and audiobooks as uh -huh. your background noise as opposed to music but there was a point where you would just listen to the director's commentary <laughs> of the lord of the rings movies like while you were ironing or whatever <laughs> Yeah, and you've mentioned that before on this podcast. Oh, yes, <laughs> I think I this the first time I took took the quiz. That's what I definitely got. I don't know what I picked different. Um, uh -huh. But I I wasn't very hungry this time. Maybe mm. that's the difference. When the Maybe. first time I took the quiz, I was definitely very hungry. Okay, did you try and build a meal that would no. like go together, or did you just go with things that you like? I just went with things that I liked. Okay, me too. <laughs> It's like, does not make sense. Okay. Appetizer? <laughs> I definitely picked char charcuterie board the first time, but this time I picked garlic bread because that looked good. Okay. I went for the jalapeno poppers, but I'm mm -hmm. convinced the picture is not of... Not they look like chicken oh. wings. They do look like chicken wings. Also, I feel like different people think about jalapeno poppers differently. Uh-huh. Like, for, is a jalapeno popper a stuffed jalapeno? That's what I think of it. Mm. So I think here, often a jalapeno popper will be some sort of like breaded and cheesy fried thing with like chopped up jalapenos. Yeah, I've it. seen that. I've seen that too. Either, I'm happy with. <laughs> uh, I'm going to skip beverage and go to mains. I bet you can pick what, you can, you can guess what I picked. Sushi? Yep. Okay, I, I went for sushi as well. I had sushi twice this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I think I picked sushi because I don't eat that very often. Whereas my second pick would have been tacos, but I eat tacos more often. Uh, it's less like... Yeah, I usually sushi. don't eat a sushi very often, but I happen to have lunch with a friend and, and we had sushi. And then your dad, like literally two days later, he's like... I feel like having sushi. Do you want sushi? I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to the same restaurant. <laughs> oh, nice. um, uh, your side? Roasted potatoes. Mm. I went for onion rings. And mm. then last of your dessert. I know I picked cake the first time, but this time I picked ice cream. Okay. I went for tarts. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. I would have guessed that. Um, yeah, the cake doesn't look that appetizing to me, but I was just thinking cake. It's like a rainbow in, cake. Yeah, I was thinking cake in general when I when I first, but then today, even though the ice cream doesn't look very, it's just vanilla with sprinkles on it, but I can pick a chocolate ice cream. I mean, it's just, just ice cream. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am. Um... Hmm. I was just noticing that like there was like a few options where there was like clearly a an Asian yeah. dish, mm -hmm. and I was just gonna pick all the, all the, the Asian, Asian stuff and, and see what happens. Um, because I'm just curious. There, there's no Asian -y dessert dessert or drink though, so I'm just gonna pick a random one for that. And see what I get. My computer's being a bit slow. Ah, oh, I got Harry Potter. 
doing that. <laughs> so, who knows? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we know that the, the, those are at least the three, um, the three choice, the three results, the three things. There's gonna be more than three, though. Probably, be probably six, because there are six choices. Six, yeah. Mm-hmm. What other ones do you think there are? Um, fantasy. Um, I don't know. Well, I feel like if if they're if they've still gone with Dune. You know the sci-fi fantasy line is blurred. Mm-hmm. So, like but it Star says Wars fantasy movie franchise. Yeah, but I feel like is do not it, it like spans yeah sci-fi fantasy. Uh-huh. So like Star Wars. Oh yeah, Star Wars is definitely f- more fantasy than science yeah, fiction. Yeah, force and yeah, it's only science fiction in that there's like multiple planets. I feel like <laughs> that's, that's the science part. Space. Yeah, that it's a different Space galaxy. Is the, is the science part. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's funny how seriously we take these these quizzes. I mean, these <laughs> ridiculous quizzes. Your new favorite is Dune, okay? <laughs> For now and until we make a, do another quiz that says otherwise. I haven't seen the second one. Have you? Yeah, I saw that one at the movie theaters. Uh-huh. And I came out of it. Because, like, you know, the first one we just watched was on Amazon Prime. Uh-huh. And, you know, everyone says, like, oh, it's, like, you know, the big screen experience or whatever. <laughs> My overriding thought, like, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than the first one. I don't know if that's because it was at the cinema or because it was just more <laughs> happening. But my first thought coming out of the theater was, that was really loud. <laughs> and then I felt old. <laughs> I I did not know that it was going to be, like, part one of, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm oh. like, why is it taking so long? And then, and then it ended. I was like, oh. It's not the whole book. <laughs> yeah, freaking nothing. So happens. then, so 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 I didn't see the second one. Your dad watched it on Amazon or whatever on TV not too long ago, and I asked him. So is that like, is there more parts, or is did they finish the book? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I think they. There's more than one book, right? Yes, there's more than one book, but they did they, they finish book one. I, I think so, but I, I've, I've never read the book, oh, so I don't okay. know. So did it this end at a cliffhanger? <laughs> She's <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> She's already forgotten. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm going to have to Google I mean, it. <laughs> I, I feel like it ended in a way that like was satisfying, but there's obviously more to the story. Okay. 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 <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you, you have, have an, any FOs? I do not, but I know you have one. Yeah, I have one. I don't have it with me. And it's more knitting. It is the funky kimono wrap, baby wrap, uh-huh. um, which I finished and I brought to... So this past weekend, I was down in the Cotswolds for a big Sam side of the family gathering. Um, it was his parents... 40th wedding anniversary and his dad's 70th birthday. Th- those two dates are like within a month of each other. So this get together was in the middle of that. Um, so it was their, their whole family plus some of Sam's parents, friends, um, rented a big house. Um, but so I knew I had to finish the baby card again for them because I was going to see the baby. So this was only the second time I've seen her. And it fits. It's good. Yay! Um, yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Those ends like <laughs> took forever. Um, and I did briefly sort of tell the parents that, you know, they could wash it and that if some of the ends look like they're coming out, like, don't worry, it's not unraveling. I like, I probably did each end at least an inch and a half, uh-huh. two inches. So like there's, there's quite a bit of end in it. So, uh-huh. but yeah, so that is done. Um, there'll be pictures I'll, um, I'll stick a picture right here. Um, yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm never doing anything like that again. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to say that things like that a lot, and I then know. we go around, and then a year okay, later do we'll do the what? exact same thing. One of the things that I said I'm never going to do again is amigurumi. And originally, I was going to make a puffin and an otter for mm-hmm. Quentin, and I never made the otter, but I mm-hmm. bought the yarn for it. I. Don't have any more yarn for it because I used the otter yarn (laughs) 
for the cardigan. So that's for some good. of the otter. That, that means you're never gonna make the otter. Yeah, it's, it's not happening. <laughs> Maybe Madeline will make it. <laughs> um, <laughs> she has been working on her her cardigan, not a card, her crocheted um, blanket blanket thing. Yeah, she's been working on mm, that. Nice. She picked that back up again. Maybe mm-hmm. she'll be a guest when she finishes it. Okay, I have no more, no more craft stuff for you. Okay, I have okay. craft stuff. So one might consider this an fo or, or yarny bits and bob. Object. But this is why or yarny bits and bob. This is yeah. why we're, I'm recording with you again, even though last time it was with you. Yes. So issue seven is currently available for pre-order. I'm not sure if it, the pre-orders will still be open when this goes episode out. goes out, but the issue launches on the 1st of October. So if you miss the pre-orders op- um, opening, you can order it from the 1st of October. Issue 7, I don't have any print copies with me yet, but soon, um, is the fables issue. So fairy <laughs> tales and fables and folk tales and legends and myths and da 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 um, we did the photo shoot at a castle. I can't remember. Have I talked about like the photo shoot yet? No, not not on not on camera. So can mm. I can I put a picture of the the, co- yeah. the okay of the of the cover and the cover pictures if you want. <laughs> um, Sam and I did like a photo shoot scouting day before the photo shoot location because I knew. I wanted to try and find some sort of castle ruins or something to to shoot the pictures. And my first thought was that Historic Scotland... So you've got Historic Scotland and the National Trust for Scotland. The National Trust for Scotland is mostly like um, palaces and manor houses, stuff that's still furnished and mm-hmm. a standing building. Historic Scotland has some of those, but mostly there's quite a lot of ruins. Um, and some of them are free to get into. So I was like, if we can find one of those, that would be great. But for so- it seems to be like during COVID and after COVID, they've a lot of them are closed or limited access just to do, um, I don't know if renovations is the right, not renovations because, you know, they're ruins, but mm-hmm. restorations or whatever. So I just had to find random other castles and we managed to find one to drive to the east of Edinburgh and it's like you have to go into this like tiny little it's not even a village it's ha- ha- I mean village thing park inside the road walk like 10-15 minutes through the woods and then there's this castle ruin um and because it was a little bit off the beaten track there wasn't you know lots of people coming and going so it was great for taking pictures um and it really set the vibe and, and everything so I'm going to show the pieces oh. And this is the only place you can see the actual pieces, like not not in a still photograph, but Allison trying it on and stuff. I guess. I mean, I, I've posted some Instagram videos uh-huh. and things. Um, okay, so this is my test to see if I can remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Into the Woods cardigan. Oh, that's so cute. It's like a little, little red riding hood. Yeah, so it's... I mean, obviously there was going to be some sort of little red riding hood um, <laughs> inspiration in somebody's design. So this is the one. And so it's got, so this is the back and there's a sort of lace panel uh-huh. all along the back. It looks, they look like the, hearts. Oh, not anymore. But oh, or, yeah, they do. The, the, the holes look kind of like when you, when you look, when you're not stressing oh, it yeah, out, kind it looks of. like So basically hearts. it's like a... It's like a diagonal mesh with a little like pico in the center, top mm. center, which kind of yeah makes a little heart shape in the Cuts. negative space. Um, well, it's called Into the Woods. It's a button up cardigan. I don't know if it'll really go over my. Is it a cardigan or is it, it has sleeves? Oh, it does have sleeves. It has sleeves. Sorry, I don't really should, go over my. I'm, I'm wearing too many layers. You should have um, worn a t-shirt. <laughs> I should have worn a t-shirt. I didn't really think about the fact that I might be putting them on. Um. And the hood is removable with buttons uh, cute. as well. So you can wear it as like a hooded cardigan or not. Um, and yeah, no. It's, That's adorable. Uh, what, the, are, what are those the, stitches on the sleeves? On the sleeves? The sleeves. What kind of stitches are on the sleeves? It's just I a, can't tell. A, uh, 
just regular crochet stitches. Um, Nothing I can't see that. Um, I was going to say the, the sort of lace panel on the side. Are you wearing anything under your sweatshirt? <laughs> Get naked. <laughs> I'm wearing a t-shirt. Okay, fine. Let me. Let me. She's undressing. <laughs> okay. But. There we go. Much better. Oh, that's really cute. You've been making TikToks with these. Yeah, TikToks and videos. So the, the lace panel. Nice. It's like a, it's like a, an A. It's an, it looks like an yeah, A. Yeah, it sort of makes a sort of. I, I like I the shape. I personally would probably, like, the way I would like to wear my cardigan, I would probably do less of the. Of the mesh. The panel insert so it mm -hmm. doesn't, like, hang down as much. Um, mm. to make it more straight but that's just how i would like to wear it um and yeah little head oh that's so cute that's into the woods that's just the first piece mm -hmm. um got a shawl this is sorsha and oh nope oh, shawl it looks kind of like a, a moth it does look kind of like a moth, although, so this one, uh, the designer was sort of wanted to make it like inspired by those sort of like witches, old witches in the forest. Mm. <laughs> um, but it looks really nice. It's got a nice shape. It's, so it's like a half circle sort of, but mm -hmm. with points at the end. Nice. And it has so sort of a lace shawl with lots of increases um, into these sort of like wedge shapes. Mm. And then there's sort of these stripes of popcorn stitches. She's done them in a mossy green and a rust. And okay, so I have to fess up, fess up to a boo boo in the magazine. The shawl is being worn the wrong side round. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I feel really bad, and so I know what happened. So basically, the in the castle ruins, there's a part where, um, you can kind of walk on the top of it, and you can. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we got any pictures. Can of it, you but... see? Can you see the stripe on the other side? So yeah. So basically, the reason why you know it's the wrong side is you've got this stripe of popcorn stitches, but the um. Instead of it being sort of individual popcorn stitches, you can uh -huh. see the yarn that connects them. Uh, so, so it looks more do, like a stripe. Do you, did you include like a close up of of the so right side? There is one picture of the shawl where the shawl is folded up, mm. and in that picture, it's correct. It's the right side okay. is on top. Um, and anyways, the re part of the reason why this happened is you know I, i'm normally you know i'm there at the shoots and i have to you know i check to make sure everything's on the right way because everyone wants to well like for instance when this was being pictured just folded up it's something that one because there's two photographers one of the photographers might just take a bunch of things and be like right i'm just gonna snap some mm. pictures without the model over here and there's been a few times where that's happened i've walked over and been like oh no that's that's upside down or like that's that's the wrong <laughs> side and we have to fix it um, so that's basically what's happened with the pictures of the shawl, that mm -hmm. where we were taking pictures, I didn't want to put too many people in the same spot, like just because it was, it was, we were sort of like on the roof of the structure mm -hmm. where there was like grass and shrubs had grown mm -hmm. on top. And I'm sure it would have been fine, but I was just like, let's not put everybody <laughs> on top of this. So it was just the photographer and the model. Mm -hmm. And I was like a bit further away. So I couldn't tell from that far that it uh. was... The wrong way around. Um, did you did yeah, did you have to like uh, do a write up in the in the? No, um, I'll I'll probably put something in the errata, but or no, what I'll do is there's um you know the QR code with the extra resources. Mm -hmm. I'll put some pictures on the digital resources. 
mm. of the correct side. Right. Uh, okay, a few more shawls for you. This is Medusa. Oh, that's cool. So it's a big triangle shawl. And you've got these uh, cord tassels at the end, which are mm -hmm. knotted in a sort of mini lattice. Mm. Um, and then the cords themselves, you have to work over the cords in the shawl. So you can oh. see this sort of like wave. Oh. That is the cord itself running all the way like through all the shawl. The way and through. You're working. So that's like mm -hmm. couching, right? Um, when you're embroidering, that's what yeah. they call um, so, so some of the rows, obviously, yeah, ha is worked over the cord and then you've got a bit of lace as well. Um, and so it's like a general wave mm. form going through the shawl. Um, yeah. And this one is a, it's an alpaca yarn and it just has such a good drape and like weight to it. Mm. Um, so, I, I so it. have you ever seen anybody do that before? It's a no. very uh, unusual technique, or not unusual, uh, unique. Unique, uh, yeah. Technique. Um, yeah, so there's that one. And then this is Lunarium. So another shawl, the shallow crescent. Oh, I like that one. I like that shape. Um, yes, yeah, so I think it's quite easy to wear as a scarf because of it. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got a textured stitch for most of the shawl. And then in the middle... It's like a chevron going. Yeah, you've got this sort of lace chevron pattern. Nice. Um, and I think that this was a bit of a challenge to write up because you work... You're working the shawl... Here. Just just because the, the directions these are worked in, mm. you sort of work uh, each side of the chevron in its entirety and then work go on to the next one. I couldn't, you know, does that make sense? Oh, okay. Um, Instead of it being worked like, you know, from here to here to the back uh -huh. and forth. I see. You, walk, you work sideways for, part, for the chevrons and then go uh -huh. back to, I, I think... Um, so, that's that one. Um, and then this one was inspired by a uh, Brothers Grimm fairy tale called The Moon, where the moon is hung from a tree. Okay, this one is Witcher. That was really cute. Top. I, just, I was just watching uh, the video that you made. Yeah, um, I am um, watching, uh, wearing posted that. a video of me wearing it. Um, and it, so it's like a size too big for me, maybe. Uh, so. <laughs> oh. so it's got shaping in the waist, shaping in the neck to make this sort of like V-neck, which looks really weird over my t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> a V-neck, sort of like a sweetheart V-line. And then the sleeves are a sort of balloony wide sleeve that's done in a silk mohair. So it goes uh, okay. Uh huh. So it's got a lot of drape. You know who yeah, would love that? Drape. That style would be your sister Emily. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's optional, but it's in this sam this sample. The bit of tulle. Sewn into uh, the sleeve okay. uh, to keep to it, make like, it puff. puffy. Yeah, and then this wire worked into the V-neck. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, so it's not like flopping. Cool. Down. That's very. Oh yeah, that's that's very the back, clever. The back like a square. Sort of square. So yeah, super cute. Um, and I was saying in the video that I posted that, you know, it, it's inspired by Wicked Witches. Uh -huh. Wicked Witch. Um, so it's done in a dark gray and a black sleeve. But equally, if you did it in like a white or a light color, it could look very princessy or something. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
And then another card. This is Anis. So for our our um, audio only listeners, subscribers, you, uh, if mm. I would definitely go and look at our YouTube to see the samples because, I mean, we try to describe things, but it's not always <laughs> very yeah. accurate. Um, so again, this is a little bit big on me, but this is Anis, and I can't remember if it's a, I think it's a alpaca, a Surrey alpaca sort mm. of held double. Um, so it's very, it's got a halo, it's very soft and drapey again. Um, so the, uh, the sleeve cuffs and the bottom hem are sort of jagged. Mm -hmm. And then it's got these like rip, rips mm -hmm. in them yeah. in the fabric. So it looks distressed. It's very spooky. <laughs> um, and then a split. It's uh, so a very tunicky looking. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it, it's supposed to meant it's meant to look a bit spooky and um because of the black anise is the inspiration, which is some English folklore from a specific area in England. I can't remember what, but basically, black anise like I don't know eats children, <laughs> skins them, wears their skins Ew. as skirts or something. Yeah, it's it's quite <laughs> gruesome. <laughs> to, uh, Folktale, hence the the spooky ripped, mm -hmm. yeah, rips. Um, so that was that one, and we did ours in a this sort of like dusky purple. Uh, this is a bit different. This is a belt, Efa. That's Tunisian crochet. I think probably it's best over a dress. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was inspired by, like, embroidery on medieval belts and hemlines and stuff like that. That's really cute. This is a cowl slash hood. You can see like the bottom, it's a cowl, and it's attached to the hood. Called Galahad. <laughs> I thought it looked a bit like chainmail or something, like a knight. I feel like it looks really funny just by itself. It looks better when you're wearing it with a coat, uh huh, and then it becomes like the hood under the coat, uh huh. But it looks really cozy. Yeah. Um, I prefer because, like, I feel like the last couple years or so has been a trend for like hoods and uh balaclavas and stuff uh -huh. i don't like the ones that are really tight to the head <laughs> like the one like the green one i made for the baby <laughs> yeah or is this like actually it's like more like a hood uh -huh. as if it was like attached to a hoodie or something okay that's galahad got another jumper this is moth lantern so speaking you mentioned moths before uh -huh. um it's a circular yoke and the yoke is all textured stitches. So hopefully you can see it in the light. But yeah. it's supposed to re represent, so these sort of like teardrop shape is like the lantern. And then on the inside, these stitches look like a moth. Oh, moth yeah, I see that now. Um, we did this in Iona wool, so it's, it's very rustic. Uh, but it also means so. that it's got good stitch definition. Uh huh. I definitely want to wear something underneath it then. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's a little scratchy, but it's it's not too bad, like, on my arms. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's a little bit big on me. Cute. A lot of texture, textured stitches going on. A lot of undressing. <laughs> This is like probably like the most folk fable fairy tale thing. Oh, that's really cute. I really like that one. <laughs> so it's got a fold down collar, uh -huh. um, sort of raglan like a checkerboard. Lines at the top, so basket weave at the top, and then this sort of like teardrop pattern. And 
slit, slits for the arms. And again, just a few little baubles to decorate the armholes. Yeah. That's really cute. <laughs> not, not really something I would wear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, you know, I, I'd, I'd, the context I would wear it would probably be as part of like a fancy dress costume or something like that. Or, uh, you know, um, but, but it is very pretty. Um, and the name, the designer came up with the name and I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it. I think it's like Sh- Shililok? Shililog? Shililok? Sh- 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 yeah. It's the cape one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll spell. How do you spell it? Do you know? S H I L L E L A G H. Oh. Um, this is Personette. It's a vest, waistcoat. If you're in the UK. This. That looks very Aladdin. I don't know why. Like Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the color. So yeah, it's green, and it's, then it's got like a pink tri- um, around the edge. Um, it's got a bit of lace at the bottom and down the upper back. Oh, okay. So it makes like an upside down T in the back, mm. the, the lace part. And then the, the front sides have a, somewhere that you can weave a, oh. a tie through. Mm-hmm. So you can either... You know, you could do like a single at the top and just like tie that in as a bow. Or you could like lace it down or up. Uh-huh. Oh, cute. That's very clever. Mm. And so this one was named Personette after uh, so the Rapunzel fairy tale was based off of a French fairy tale, which is obviously, I mean, maybe not obviously, but there's lots of different versions of the made it in the tower sort of thing but mm-hmm. personette was the same where she had like long hair and she was in the tower um and she was called personette because her mother was craving parsley and uh. her dad um snuck into the fairy's garden mm-hmm. to steal parsley to steal for his uh-huh. wife yeah last one this is Vasilos- vasilisa vasilisa and it's like mosaic. Mosaic crochet. Wow. That's really impressive. Yeah, it's really pretty. Like, um, so it's all mosaic crochet, two colors, um, kind of a small blanket sized. Um, in the book, in the magazine, we fold it in half diagonally and kind of worn it as a sh- big cozy shawl. Mm-hmm. Um, but it goes through the story of Vasila, Vas, I always want to say Vasilasa, Vasilisa, Vasilisa, the beautiful, um, and Baba Yaga, mm-hmm. the witch. So it from looks the center like... out each of the three motifs. So that mm-hmm. there's like from the center it goes out into three different squares, and each of those motifs represents a different part of the story. Oh, okay. I mean, it looks like the way it's set up. It looks like. One of those fancy oriental rugs. Mm. Um, it's um, they're very have... geometric. Yeah. The patterns. I know this mid- this first one's meant to represent the doll. So you can oh, kind of see the yeah. head. I guess it, and the like arms. The dolls and the... Are going like yeah, this. That's the doll. Um, that's a lantern. The outer one. And then the middle one. I think it's the hut, Baba Yaga's hut, hut which is uh. stood on chicken legs. Oh, isn't Baba Yaga the one that like like the boogeyman or something like that? Like she's a witch of some kind. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think in the story, you know, it's like Baba Yaga is said to live in this in the forest and she eats children, uh-huh. and the wicked stepmother keeps sending Vasilisa into the woods. Oh, she sends her into the woods to ask Baba Yaga for a lantern. Mm. Presumably in the hope that the stepdaughter will get Ian and <laughs> never return. But she does return with a lantern and burns her stepmother alive. Uh, burns her to ash. Very gruesome. Whatever. Right. 
Ugh, okay, I'm going to sit back down. <laughs> that was some like workout. That was like a mini workout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so those are all the designs in issue seven. Very cool. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased with how the pictures came out. Like the, the setting was just perfect. Um, because we're like in the woods and in the ruins. Uh, and this time round, the, the model, Rajani, she lives here in Edinburgh. So it wasn't somebody that I knew before. I just kind of reached out on Instagram because I'd seen her on Instagram. Um, she teaches some, uh, she teaches dance here in Edinburgh. Um, so oh, I was like, okay. ah, she'll be com- com- comfortable in front of a camera, like, you know, performing uh-huh. and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and she did a great job, and she did her, did her own makeup, which is nice. Nice. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Oh, okay. Um, so I do have a, a shop talk. Two in a row. Nice. Wow. So since, since it, is, it is after Labor Day, and also, you know, the weather's getting cooler, I'm thinking about more um, fall themed stuff i made this is definitely a fall themed bag it's got oh yeah that's cute. it's got some blue pump i don't know why they're blue but there's blue pumpkins and boots green boots sunflowers and some gourds orange leaves apples Sorry. it's really cute so it's like a blue and orange oh i but, like the kingdom that's cute yeah i, I had yeah <laughs> So that's one, um, and then the second one is kind of funny. It's a uh, cumin spice. <laughs> I had to PSL. get this one. <laughs> okay, no, wait, I'm wait. just calling it pumpkin spice because it actually has pumpkin. Was it donuts? There's some apples and apple. Cider. I was gonna say there's like an apple donut. Yeah, an apple sh- sh- decorated donut. Uh huh. Um, ha, that's that's quite good though. <laughs> yeah, there's that, and then another just a uh, kind of oops, kind of a generic uh, fall in the farm. Got sheep. Oh yeah. I I picked up this fabric because it's got sheep on it. Yeah, sheep, pigs, chicken, mm. goose, pumpkin, tractor, apple, tractor. yeah, wheelbarrow, turkey. Oh, I see corn. turkey. And there's corn too. <laughs> and there's and a rooster leaves. in there somewhere. Okay, yeah. so those are my, my three fall themed bags. Yes. And th- thanks for um, those that bought some of the, was it the Halloween bags that I, uh, yeah. I listed mm-hmm. last time? I've sold, sold a few of them already. Very good. So, thank you. That's it. That's all I have. And you're all talked out. <laughs> mm, yeah, I feel like it's a mini monologue doing all those. Things. Yeah, well, it's good that we didn't have too many projects because you know we wanted to talk. We knew we wanted to um, show off your samples. Yeah. Um, <laughs> spiel. Yes, time for the spiel. Do you know? Okay, so you know how we we're talking about how we've now written the script, so you can do the spiel. Uh-huh. I do normally have like just like the list of. You know, uh-huh. our Instagram the points, the, the talking URL. points. Yeah. Yeah. But my thing's not scrolling, so I can't even see that. So I'm going to try and do this <laughs> feel totally cold. So <laughs> thank you for listening. You can find our show notes on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. Our Instagram is also kcacypodcast. My personal app Instagram is Allison here. And my mom's is upstate underscore div. Like, comment, subscribe, favorite, and all the things. Uh, wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube, you can join our Ravelry group if you, if you like it. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry Yarn in the group tab. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and remember to keep calm and carry yarn. Bye! Good job! <laughs>